There are two parts to using the strumming system in the Evolution guitars, the chord mode and the strumming itself. Let's go over the chord modes first. By default, the chord mode is set to disabled. That's what allows you to play notes in the main playing range. In any other chord mode, the main playing range is muted. That's because then the playing range is used for selecting guitar voicings rather than playing notes. So don't worry if you switch to one of these modes and then you don't hear anything when you play. Um, let's go back to the disabled chord mode for one second. And that's because I want to mention that the strum downstroke and upstroke keys, which are mapped right below the main playing range by default, can still be used in the disabled chord mode. You would use them, for example, to repeat the last note or chord played, like this. If I play a chord in the main playing range, then I can use those two keys to strum down and up on those notes. You can also use it with a single note to play a tremolo like this. That way there aren't any gaps between the notes as you repeat the same note over and over. Okay, so let's go to the held notes only chord mode. I'll just go through all the, the chord modes and kind of give you a quick explanation of how they work. So in the held notes only chord mode, it lets you play a voicing in the main playing range of your keyboard. And then when you use the strumming pattern keys or the strum down and up upstroke keys, it will play those notes exactly when you strum. So I'm just going to hold down a G major triad to demonstrate this. And then when I play the strum down and upstroke keys, you can hear it strumming those notes exactly. The other thing that I should mention is it will remember which notes you played. So I can play a full chord voicing. I'm playing in E major voicing with both hands right now. And then I can release those notes and still use the strum keys and it'll remember which notes I had held. So that's also very useful. I like using the held notes only chord mode when I have very specific voicings that I want to play, um, but I don't want to have to set up custom chord voicings in the custom chords mode, which I'll get to later. So that's a pretty useful chord mode. I would definitely recommend starting out using the automatic chords mode uh, for the reason that it lets you play, say, a simple triad in the main playing range, and it'll automatically convert it to a full guitar voicing. Now this takes into consideration the current fretting position, the capo setting that you're using, any alternate tunings, so it's a very dynamic mode. Um, let me give you an example. I'm just going to play a G major triad. And, you know, as I mentioned before, you still won't hear anything in any of these chord modes other than the disabled mode. But now I'm going to use those two strum keys and uh, show you what it sounds like. So as you can hear, even though I only held down a simple G major triad, it's interpreting that um, into a full guitar voicing, just like a real guitarist would play. Now, if I go to the setup and I change the fretting position, say I move the fretting position higher up, now when I play that same voicing, it'll use a different voicing on the guitar to compensate for that fretting position. This mode also takes into consideration the inversion that you play the chord in as well. So if I play an open E triad on my keyboard, it'll use that voicing. If I play in the first inversion, you can see it put the third in the bass. And then similarly with the second inversion, it just makes sure that there's a B as the very lowest note. So that's also very useful. The automatic chords uh, mode can pretty much handle any chord type that you throw at it, so it's also very useful in that respect. 
So moving on, let's go to the custom chords uh, mode. Now this is pretty much for power users. It allows you to define your own voicings. First, we click on the learn new chord button. And what this does is it allows us to play a chord on our keyboard. Uh, it could be any chord, it could even be just a, a single note. And when you, when you play that chord, it'll recognize it. And you'll notice right here, there's nothing set up for the voicing. And so you'd use these controls to um, set the frets for each note in the chord. And you can use you know, these as a reference um, for which notes are included in the chord, as well as the uh, visualization right here on the fretboard so you can see what sort of chord that you're setting up. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is pretty much a, a power user feature, so um, it is more complex than the other chord modes. So you could set up a chord mode like that, like here's a basic C major chord that I just created. And so next time I hold down that C major triad, it'll use this voicing that I just created. So that's useful. And I should mention that the voicing that you create here doesn't have to have any relation to the input uh, note or chord right here. So if I delete that, I can uh, actually just learn a new chord and I'm just going to press a single key on my keyboard. And then I could use that to set up any type of chord I want. I could set that up as a full C major chord voicing on the guitar, or it could be any other type of chord. I could, you know, make it a E flat major seven or something like that, you know. So there doesn't have to be any relation between the note that you press on your keyboard and the resulting custom chord voicing. It's really whatever you want it to be. And that's why I usually recommend it for power users. Though you might check out some of the different uh, custom chords presets we have here to get an idea of some of the different custom chord voicings you can get that are very imaginative and very creative, uh, and also how to set them up as well. So let's go back to the automatic chords mode. Um, and then let's go through the strumming controls. So now that I've got that chord mode selected, I'll go and I'll just choose one of the factory strum presets, just so I can demonstrate it in use. So I'll hold down a C major triad. And now that I have, I should mention first, now that I have one of the strumming patterns loaded, you'll notice this key switch appeared right here. It'll only show you key switches for patterns that actually have data loaded in them. So if I go back to the initialized preset, you'll notice that key switch disappeared. So there, there aren't any strumming patterns available. Uh, there are six strumming pattern slots here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And below the numbers, you'll notice a MIDI note. And that's the default key that they're set to. So C0, C sharp zero, D zero, and so forth. Now you can actually change which key these are mapped to by just clicking on it and then learning it to a different MIDI key. But I usually just leave them, you know, set to the octave and the notes that they're set at by default. Okay, so with that being said, let's go back to one of the factory presets. So I'll hold down a chord on my keyboard and then I will also hold down um, the C0 key to trigger the strumming pattern. the strumming pattern key still held and it'll change. So that's how the basic playability works for the strumming engine. Uh, and you can have multiple patterns loaded in each one of these slots. And then that way you can switch back and forth between different strumming patterns or different variations of the same general strumming pattern. Um, let's go through a couple more presets just so you can get an idea of what is possible using the built-in strumming pattern system. So 
So you probably notice that as I'm playing these strumming patterns, you can see a little indicator that shows which strum is getting played. And then there's this cool little visualization here where you can see how many strings are getting strummed. Um, and the angle of this line shows you the speed of the strum. Um, and then there's also an arrow that points in the direction that the strum occurs. So if I wanted to slow down one of these strums, I could just grab this handle here and drag up or down to speed it up or slow down. So here's a very fast strum and here's a really slow strum. So let me try playing it now. So that's a really slow strum. I, I probably wouldn't use that in a pattern like this. Okay, so the next thing above it, you have the velocity of the strum, and this 82%. And the reason that they are displayed in percentages is because they're relative to the velocity that you play the strumming pattern key. So if I play the strumming pattern key very loudly, the entire pattern will get played loudly, like this. <laughs> Let me play that same key softly. And that way you get some real-time control over the dynamics of the strumming pattern. Right above that is the articulation that the strum is played with. And you can click on that and get a drop-down menu of all the different options. So you have none, which is no strum. And if there's a strum before it, like in the case of this beat right here, the strum before will carry over. So there's no strum played, but it's not a rest either. So if you select the rest in contrast, here, let me speed this strum up. So I've got the rest selected. If I play that strum pattern now, it'll sound like this. So you can hear it releases the notes right there. Um, you also can select between the other articulations available, as well as all the different effects. So for example, instead of a rest, say you wanted to mute the strings by slapping the strings like this. Then the strumming pattern will sound like this. And that way you can inc incorporate different articulations and different effects all within a single strumming pattern. Let's go through some more of the factory strumming patterns. Here, let's try this one. I, I can see it's using a palm mute right there, as well as a harmonic articulation. So that's a cool one. Um, I should also mention these controls right here. You have the length of the pattern, which can be between a single measure or two measures, um, the number of beats in the measure, uh, so that way you can uh, get some odd meters as well, uh, as well as the division of each beat. So right now, I've got it in the eighth note division, which means I can have up to two strums per beat, You know, so eighth notes. Um, but that can also be set to 8th triplets or even 16th notes uh, for a more complex or rhythmically complex strumming pattern. You can also um, add swing to the strumming pattern. And it's not an off or on value, but uh, it's a percentage. And then that way, if you want just a small amount of swing, you know, between your 8th notes, so every other 8th note, you know, all the upbeats could be staggered ever so slightly, you know, you could set it to a fairly low percentage. Um, or if you really want a lot of swing, you would, of course, increase that control. So let's take one of the existing factory presets. Actually, this one already has swing, so I'll be able to demonstrate that so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, now let's try straightening it out just so you can hear. Here's with... Uh, a lot less swing. And then here's with no swing at all. So you can hear that control gives you um, 
a lot of different granularity just depending on the amount of swing that you want in your pattern. And that way it's easy to fit along with uh, whatever groove that you're working with. So that's how the strumming system works. There are a lot of different possibilities um, just within what I showed you uh, with the different chord modes and the strumming patterns and all of those can be combined because you can use key switches to switch between the different chord modes. Um, you can use the strumming patterns um, along with the single strums. So say for example I have a strumming pattern and at the end of each measure, say I want to have some variance, but I don't want to be switching between different strumming patterns. I could just leave those strums empty, and then whenever I get to that place in the bar, I have room to use the single strum keys to play any variation that I want right there. So you can combine any of those techniques um, to get as simple or complex a strumming pattern you need. Anyway, I hope this video helped and I hope it clarified a lot of the things around the strumming patterns and the different chord modes. Thank you very much for watching.